Yeah, we're ready. We're live. Yeah, but I got to give it a few minutes, Ricky, for oh, the for oh. the thing to all take place. Got to warm so, up, Ricky. Anyways, uh, uh, with me. <laughs> welcome to Prophecy Montana, folks. Uh, my name is Carrie. We got Ricky, my co-host, and my wife Lisa and um, uh, Ruth Stanton with us as well. And we're going to talk about something I've been wanting to talk about for a while, and that is uh, pharmakia. There's a there's a word in the New Testament uh, that's translated into sorcery. You know, when you read yeah. about sorcery in the New Testament, that word is often f the word pharmakia, uh, the or Greek pharmacy. word. Or pharmacy. Just pharmakia, Lisa. Well, it's, oh. <laughs> but it is pharmacy. But that's, that's where our modern yeah. translation of the word pharmacy comes mm -hmm. from, is from the word pharmakia. Mm -hmm. and I Which just, is, again, sorcery. Uh, it's translated as sorcery in the New Testament. But if you look it up, uh, the definition, uh, and I just Googled this, um, it's, it's directly from medieval Latin pharmacia, uh, from Greek pharmakia, a healing or harmful medicine, a healing or poisonous herb, a drug, poisonous potion, magic potion, dye, raw material for physical chemical processing. In Revelation, we read where the whole world would be deceived by the sorceries uh, of the beast. Mm -hmm. And, and so, sorceries of Babylon. <laughs> yeah. And so what does this whole thing mean to you guys? To me, it <clears throat> means sorcery of babylon to me i believe the the thing majiggy that they convinced whole world i believe that was a lie <laughs> i believe that was a lie uh, i i have so much to say about pharmacia because they're they they have um legalized marijuana everywhere and they're they're saying that it's for to ease people's pain and I don't really, I, I don't really believe in that. I, I mean, I, I, I think they want to get high. And, and then, you know, like I was just watching a program. It was just horrifying about the lions in Africa. They actually have these farms and they're, they're putting these lions in there. And after they're three years old, they kill them, take all the flesh off the bones, and then they sell the bones. And they're making they're making so much money doing this and that's for cancer and then they're doing the rhino horns for aphrodisiacs mm -hmm. and also uh the the ivory from the elephants and they they're saying that even if they find them they're going to just kill them if they don't have their horn on and they're they're jumping over these 24 foot trail um um fences to get to them so in Revelation 18, 23, we read, And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And that word there is the word pharmakia. And so... The, the, um, the influx of drugs through the cartels, mm. that when you said merchants, they're merchants of death is what they are. And um, it's all for for money. Wouldn't the pharmacies be the same, though? I mean, and like the big dilly like uh, Moderna and all them. Uh, I think there's an mm -hmm. element of that to them. But I also think there are medications that really help. Yes. But did you ever, because I remember when the vaccination came out and stuff, and I was sending things. I know when our church was given vaccinations or whatever, and I, uh, I was sending things out where Ellen White's writings, and she talked totally against ever taking any kind of a, a drug uh, over the. Ca I mean, how is it? Uh, prescription drugs and stuff. But they were prescribing things like strychnine and mercury, and things that we know are absolute poisons. I don't think all mm -hmm. pharmacy. Well, look at insulin. Mm -hmm. If you're diabetic. You can't live without it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there are yeah. things that without yeah. um, medical intervention, you can't survive. And so, but I do think there's a lot of stuff that it's just, they keep upgrading because they want to keep the patent mm -hmm. and they want to keep getting Making more money. money for it and you that know. kind of thing. Then so the there's a lot of corruption there. And the doctors, it's not all bad. don't they get paid actually from the companies too to push it as well? Not legally, I don't think. Not well, legally, there's, huh? 
there was instances where kickbacks. Oh, okay. where women were getting hooked on to painkillers. So the, here they are, just a housewife. They go and they get hurt, maybe a car accident, their back and spine. They start taking this medication. They end up losing their husband. Their husband leaves them. Their kids. They're actually now on the streets selling their body to get drugs. So, I mean, this is really a big thing. And then also, what about all the drug cartels that come over from Mexico? I mean, they could put a stop to this. Now they don't even come over. They just come over with the drone and drop it on the other side. And this Jeep or something grabs it and takes off with it. Part of the problem, too, is the consumer. We want a quick oh. fix to our pain. Yeah. We don't want to take the time to use ice or hot compresses or to take a nap or to do the things that would deal Helpful. with our pain in a healthful way because that takes time. Mm -hmm. And we're in such a hurry that, oh, I'll pop a pill and I'll be fine. Yeah, they'll take a fentanyl. <laughs> or uh, Well, yeah, and that's getting the world, I mean, big time. That's right now. So, that's the big thing. So going back to what Ruth was talking about, you know, the, the, the need for certain med medications. You know, mm -hmm. the Bible talks about giving wine unto them who are ready to perish. No, strong drink unto them yeah. who are ready to perish. You know, and there's almost a connotation of, of, of you know, a form of relieving that person's f suffering in their final day, you know, their final hours of life or something like that. Do we have an equivalent of those sort of treatments today? We don't give people alcohol anymore, but we perhaps, like my well, dad. Hospice um, care involves medications of different kinds that are really mm -hmm. strong painkillers. Yes. Yeah, because my dad had a brain tumor and it was causing him tremendous pain and confusion at the same time. And uh, his mm -hmm. final days were, um, they were giving him, you know, lots of morphine and, and easing his pain. And I'm very glad and grateful for that, you know. Now, had he, uh, you, but that same morphine on the streets becomes a, a terrible plague and a, and a bane on society, you know, and this, these sorceries that the Bible talks of, I believe, are something to confuse the nations mm -hmm. or something to, to shut our frontal lobe down, you know, or to, something to control us to, yeah, to control us, to shut down our spirituality. Uh, when we talk about Let's say, and sorcery could be a lot of different things. Could it be TV? Could it be, um, could it be prescription drugs? Could it be alcohol? We could use all kinds of things to medicate ourselves. Mm -hmm. To to um, we don't want to deal with reality. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's painful. We don't want to deal with it, so we medicate with whatever mm -hmm. that will take mm -hmm. our mind off of it for a little while. Yeah, I think it's us doing it. We do it because of death and because life is hard and and kids grow up and they're berserk and yeah i mean we 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 tended to get on something not we not us of course <laughs> but well people we as who don't kind. know jesus and can't don't have a connection where they can rely on mm -hmm. him they have to do something and the devil is not going to let us have a connection with jesus if he can possibly prevent it mm-hmm and so it, it takes effort on our part to maintain that connection. And then when the troublous times come, we have somebody to lean on that can give us mm -hmm. relief. You know, Carrie, this whole makes me think because whenever I used to read Revelations and I, the sorceries of Babylon, I always thought of, you know, like with uh, spirits and stuff like, you know, and they are, but the way you've made me look at it, it's totally something different than what we might be thinking. It can be medication, could be the vaccination. You know what I mean? That controls the people. It's something beyond what so, I used to think. So when you look at uh, a lot of the pagan religions, a lot of the third world countries, and even in this country now, they're they're making a huge revival, the Middle Eastern religions ever since the 60s have been on the rise mm -hmm. and so w one of the components of all of these religions is is hallucinogenics and they're very commonplace and so they take you into this different realm where they can experience these visions and stuff and 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 be transformed uh, uh, not transformed transported transported into a different realm you know and some of these drugs are very powerful mm -hmm. and mind-altering and now we have you know, in the big cities and stuff, you see the chaos that these drugs have created, 
And you can't help but think that this is the hand of the devil at work. But we have forms of drugs for the working class people, for the non-addicts, if you will, for the people who appear to be like operating just fine. Because what's one of the things in society that we focus on more than anything is that our inability to operate you know, efficiently. But if we can operate efficiently, we can do all the drugs we want as long as well, we're taking care of our look, families. Just look at coffee. When I was growing up, coffee mm-hmm. was probably the strongest stimulant you could get legally. And nowadays, you can buy all these things Red like Bull. Jolt and whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen them in the store. And I mean, mm-hmm. they have 10 times the caffeine of a coffee. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's even things that we used to think we're rather innocuous that they've concentrated mm-hmm. and made, we think we can't survive without them. I mean, there's people who spend buku bucks all month long for their coffee or their whatever. And, you know, when they put a spider on coffee, its web is not perfect. It, it's all messed up. It's caffeine all is way. addictive. People it, who it are it strong up. into caffeine, when they t- stop taking it, they get terrible headaches no, and withdrawals. They say it puts a, a hue across the frontal lobe in your mind mm. where it clouds you just so much where you don't retain anything. Well, and that's, that's the thing why. with all of these substances. That's what they're designed to do is to, to compromise our mm-hmm. spiritual connection with God. You know, And it even translates into our diets. Now, yeah. I know the Adventists are big on a vegetarian diet we're big on uh you know living a good clean life fresh air sunshine exercise the holistic lifestyle of of health and and spirituality being the you know very important factor in that um you know is it possible that we can uh uh have a a lifestyle that you know when we're eating bad things that can compromise our spirituality, then we're doing bad things, watching well, bad things. Just think mm-hmm. about when you eat a big Thanksgiving meal, all you want to do is sleep afterwards. <laughs> so food, especially of the wrong kind, clouds your mind. Mm-hmm. It makes you dull-witted. You just want to sleep. So, it, I mean, anything that does that to your brain, and it can be a lot of things, you want to avoid because that's where the battle is. Mm-hmm. Satan wants control of our minds. Yep. And, um, you know, anything we do that dulls our wits and dulls our mind is giving him an advantage. And there's somebody out there that's probably thinking, well, you know, you guys are just trying to take all our fun away. That's why I'm not a Christian, you know, <laughs> because every time I hear you Christians talk, you guys are just talking about how I got to give up one more thing that, you know, I mean, I, there's no that's way. the devil talking to you. It's what he told Eve. If you if you eat this, it's going to be wonderful. You're going to be like God. It's he he says that to us all the time, and for an instant it may be, mm-hmm. but in the long run it's harmful. Mm-hmm. It's interesting Ellen White's take on that eating of the apple, uh, because she said that Eve uh, actually fruit. experienced a, a mm-hmm. yeah, euphoria, yeah, some euphoria that that she that she experienced this. Mm-hmm this uh this dopamine release mm-hmm. that you know almost felt like hey this is actually working you know like a rush like after a, doing a big jolt well, a rush i think hmm. i think it's like the first time you ever stole in a store it's like you're looking around you're like you know and then you you, you want that gum and or whatever it was gum for me so you've been stealing gum yeah, lately. So adrenaline rush <laughs> and then you grab it and you're looking around and you're just thinking did anyone see me no and you, you are getting that rush and you're like no i just gotta make it out the door <laughs> you know <laughs> lisa lisa <laughs> we're gonna have a little talk afterwards lisa <laughs> but then the devil comes at you later yeah and he beats you up look yeah. at what you did yeah yeah you don't yeah. have any willpower you're terrible mm-hmm. you know yeah, it uses that guilt yeah. on us to, to break us down. And it's almost like, I mean, it is a process that he's putting us through and to to draw us further and further away from Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, and that guilt keeps us from, from going back to God. Even the Bible tells us that our sins have separated us mm-hmm. from God, mm-hmm. you know, and so. Exactly. But, you know, today's form of pharmacia is, is powerful. We look at, um, now just back in the 60s, you know, just from the hippies that I've talked to and stuff and. You know, my drug career wasn't really that all that long, but 
but maybe you know, Ricky, uh, you've had a longer career in drugs than I have. Mm, you know, Carrie. not to. No, well, he's no. telling the truth. No, I, I it's was, the truth. I was and a junkie from what from fourteen to twenty nine. Yeah, he's not. Day. He's not ashamed of it. He I uses it as a as a tool to witness life now. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Only through Christ. Yeah, Only through Christ. Christ. But but my point is this yeah, is that <laughs> is that when you know when marijuana hit the scene it it was it was kind of a mild drug in the mm-hmm. beginning, you know. The the THC content was very low and it was, you know, it it, it it, ragweed, <laughs> ragweed, or whatever, <laughs> and then grenades, <laughs> <laughs> and then some of the more more potent stuff, you know, came out. And I know during uh, Vietnam, uh, one of the things that the enemy did was provide lots of drugs to our soldiers mm-hmm. and to demoralize them. And so hashish hit the scene, heroin, a lot of those other drugs, you know, in, in great quantity. And so. Um, and to this day, a lot of those soldiers that came out of that war were a lot more messed up than those of World War II and, and previous wars. Mm-hmm. They just had this mental anguish that they couldn't overcome. Well, they had post-stress PTSD problem, plus that what they done. They used drugs to cope the with what happened, that they what had. they went through, because it was given. And, of course, that seems like probably and most people And they believed the do. lie that the drugs would help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In yes. the long run, the drugs are not what helps. Mm-hmm. It's an, it's a relationship with God and knowing mm-hmm. that you can be forgiven. Mm-hmm. Yep. But they were fed the lie that the drugs would medicate, you know, and you'll mm-hmm. feel better. And for a little while, it worked. Yeah, yeah. for a little while. Yeah, it it's it's a quick fix, you mm-hmm. know. And uh, I never drank because I was in any kind of pain, you know, like a- mental anguish. But uh, I drank to feel good. I, I did drugs to feel good. Mm-hmm. And so, and you know, and... Uh, and that's, of course, why everybody gets, you know, that's the, the attraction. Takes it away. If anybody's yeah, ever yeah, had yeah. a shot of morphine, you, you know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. I mean, it's the greatest feeling on earth for a little while, you know. And so it can put you so in a really happy place. That marijuana he was talking about, which was pretty much in everyone's backyard and sitting on top of their toilet on the back part of their toilet <laughs> growing. Maybe We're in the from kitchen California. windows. I don't know about the toilet. No, Anyhow. On the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> then all of a sudden it's hydro potted, hydro hydroponics, yeah, ponics, and yeah. it's just way bit different. And it, it is going around; and it's affecting everybody different. I mean, like they are out of their mind. The potency you know, of the weed today is just unbelievable. It's yes, yeah. I I would probably OD. So if we I did have we have a neighbor when he smokes it, he can't even talk. Oh, He's sure. like. He wants to say something, but he can't. Yeah. Then we have another neighbor who thinks I'm from Israel and I'm there to blow him up. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. It uh, really so messes with them. It mind. really messes with them. And he's sneaking around. And he's telling that people would be bad scary, stuff actually. about us. <laughs> yeah, it is scary. Mm. And then, I mean, it's just crazy what it's doing to people's so, mind. What do you guys think of the legalization of all these things, the recreational use of Something like marijuana. Because when I was a kid going to high school, we used to watch films on the evil, you know, what was it? Uh, Reefer Madness was mm-hmm. the film that they showed everybody. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, but now it's legal. Huh. For recreation and medicinal. Now there's mm-hmm. all of a sudden all these medicinal properties to it that people have discovered. I think it's a sign that we're getting near the end. Yes. Not only just drugs, but I mean, a lot of places shoplifting is not prosecuted anymore. Oh, I know. Um, Lying is looked on as well. If it's convenient, I'll tell the truth. If not, I'll do whatever's best for me. I mean, generally, mm-hmm. society has become more and more lax about what will make it um, successful and prosperous. Everybody's out for me, mm-hmm. and and the drugs is a sign of that. We want what we want right now. What'll make me feel good right now, and I'll worry about it that tomorrow. Wasn't it Pollyanna that said, I'll worry about it tomorrow? No, it was Scarlett O'Hara and God Oh, Scarlett O'Hara, yeah. yeah. I'll worry about it tomorrow. I'll think about it tomorrow. Know? I can't think about it right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the attitude. But tomorrow's going to get here, and you're going to be in a worse pickle than you're in right now. Mm-hmm. Well, and more importantly, like we were talking about earlier, the judgment. The judgment is on its way, and I yeah. mean, the, the judgment is essentially here now. You know, I had to leave. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say... I worry seriously what the government's going to tell us to take. 
just like with the vaccine. I worry about the drugs that they're, you know, I worry about all of them, but you're doing them by your choice. Mm-hmm. Other ones, they're mandating for you that you have to take or whatever. I, I, it's wrong. You know what I mean? To me, that's pushing their sorcery on us and stuff. And I don't know, personally, myself, yeah, I know there's drugs that you have to, certain drugs that people have to take to live or whatever. But uh, I believe, I don't believe that vaccine was, you know what I mean? I, I believe that people, I never got it. I'm still alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know I had a heart transplant, you know, a valve transplant. I have to take medicine to thin my blood, I guess, or else I wish I didn't have to, but mm-hmm. apparently I do have to take mm-hmm. it. So that, like you were saying before, I, maybe we have to judge what it is, but I, I what I lost my train of thought. My train of thought was on: couldn't it be vaccinations or something that could be the? No, it's something they're selling us now. The vaccination you, you don't was something think the really conscious. No, well, that, I think the vaccination. Uh, there, there might have been some. Sh- I mean, there's most definitely was. We're gonna get ba- this video is gonna get banned. Well, because uh, to me, this, it's huge. There I mean, was some shenanigans that went along with some of that. And it's, but primarily, I think the whole point behind the vaccine that I saw was that it effectively divided people so well. You, you, That's you, what it was, a division a lot of, thing. It has caused a lot of people's illness. A lot of people, uh, there's a sudden death syndrome that's going on, and it's happened ever since the vaccination started. Uh, and it's bad, and they're not saying anything about it. You'll get a few places that are. There's people talking about it now. Yeah, and what I wanted to, to me, it's bull crud, and that's What that's I wanted it. to bring up was was the food i mean they are vaccinating the cows now oh yeah so they're doing everything. the cheese yeah. is coming out of the udders and and the cheese is infected well what did ellen and white talk about the butter about the food what does she say about uh, animal products in particular she said we're going to have to give them up Solely. because they're going to be so contaminated mm-hmm. so you know, mm-hmm. we can't continue to eat them. So perhaps that mm-hmm. she saw these things. Um, and I know there was an outcry over the, oh, you know, across the country. For the chickens weren't laying eggs anymore. Mm-mm. And there was question about the feed. Now, we actually tested this with our own chickens. Mm-hmm. And we switched the because our chickens quit laying. They'd never quit laying before. Well, it's wintertime, people told us. It's cold out. They don't lay. Well, our chickens always laid. And so we changed the feed. And by golly, they started laying again. Yeah. And what was weird, yeah. they, the one was laying. There was one chicken that was laying, but it would lay these, these soft, rubbery Shells, eggs. Yeah. And it was the weirdest looking egg I've ever seen. We mm-hmm. changed their feed. They're all laying again. Sometimes so, okay, they're okay, Carrie, twice a day. With that, you uh-huh. think, okay, if they'll do that with the feed with their animals, they're not going to try to do it to us. They well, are doing it to it's us. Exactly. They're giving us. Here's the thing. They're giving us mealworms. I and, mean, and yeah. but something that crickets. they're mandating people to get, they mandated, they pushed everyone to get. Uh, dude, I don't know. To well, me, I thought you guys could have seen through that. I don't know, but to me, that's... Well, I'm, I'm censoring a lot of what I'm saying right now. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, apparently you're not. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we know, we know that, the, that the world and people who are worldly are out for themselves. Yes. You know, whatever will make them the most mon- money or make them the most comfortable or will limit the competition against them. I mean, that's the evil in the world. Mm-hmm. And... We have to live, I can't say not in harmony with it, but we have to realize have to that live with it God all around has us. something better for us. Mm-hmm. And we have to keep our focus on him. Amen. And Amen. he'll take care of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there are things, you know, that, well, I was reading in Romans, and Paul says that you need to obey the authorities. Yeah. As long as they don't contradict God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but your body your body I I, I um oh. you obey the authorities because mm-hmm. we're in the last days you can see the authorities when it comes to your body trust in God I'd rather serve God than man and I will trust God that He will take care of me He will take care of us mm-hmm. and He He sets up governments and He takes them down mm-hmm. at His will and um. We need to focus on obeying his will. Amen. Amen. And not worry about the consequences or worry about what someone else is going to say about us Mm -hmm. because we live according to God's will. 
So mm-hmm. here's the way I kind of look at this scenario that you just painted for us. Um, you know, Noah was told to build an ark. Mm-hmm. Now, there was lots of people, very smart people in his day, that leveled all kinds of problems his way. Sure, you're building an ark. But if there's really going to be a flood like what you're saying, my calculation says this boat ain't going to hold up. My calculations say that you're going to crash. Your, your likelihood of crashing into a rock mm-hmm. or a floating tree or debris is very high. Your likelihood of sinking, how are you going to pump the water out? How are you going to do this, Noah? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do this? And all these doubts and all these things were, were sent his way. He was just told to do something simple by God, set forth with the plans to build this ark, and he did as God told him to do. Mm-hmm. Now, God gives us a plan in these last days, too. And he's given us he's given us a, enough direction to get by. Mm-hmm. And yes, there's a ton of pitfalls, and there's a ton mm-hmm. of things out there we can get trapped up in, and and fall in. Uh, but as long as you know we focus on well, Jesus now, eyes on Jesus. I was so I was so into this lesson. I, I I wanted to sit in here and and talk about it. I felt like God had impressed me. But anyways, in Daniel, the rise and fall of the kings. It happened five times, and then also it leaves us in the the toes of the prophecy. Then it picks up in Revelation. He told us pre-advanced who was going to rise, who was going to fall, who was going to rise, who was going to fall. Now he's coming. He's going to be here. Mm -hmm. He's our king. He's coming. The world's going to fall. We can have confidence. And we have to... He, yeah. he he's put all this stuff in the Bible for us to know. It's up to us to read it and apply it and, and to put it to faith, you know? And I think in, uh, when you talk about um, what's going on in the world, it may have an effect on us. It may make us very uncomfortable. We mm-hmm. may end up having bad things happen to us because of the corruption around us Mm -hmm. that we can't escape. But we Mm -hmm. still need to keep our focus on God because Mm -hmm. it's Mm -hmm. not, he said, it's not, not, don't worry about the man who can kill the body. Mm -hmm. Worry about the one who Mm -hmm. can kill the soul in hell. That's a good point. And 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 so, you know, we can't be concerned about what is going on in the world as far as how wicked it is. There has to be a balance in our concern. Mm-hmm. There has to be a balance in our concern. We can't just totally flagrantly disregard it. We can't just become obsessed with it either. Mm-hmm. Um, but becoming mm-hmm. obsessed with Jesus does sound like a good thing. We just you have know? to keep in mind that God is stronger than everything else around us, mm-hmm. even when it doesn't seem that way. And, you know, it's almost like he doesn't, it's almost like us. I think God gave us children for this for this one fact. You got this baby. You only want the best for it. You got it cradled to your heart. You want it to grow up to, to be strong and be nurtured, to love people. And you got all these different millions of different things you want for this child. That's all God wants for us. Mm-hmm. All we want for ourselves is to watch TV, to, you know, uh, instant gratification. Forget, forget, yeah, forget with the pharmacia and do all this stuff. And, and all he's saying is, I made you. I made this earth. I know what what will what What's you would like you. i know what you would like how you how to nourish you how to make you grow and be a better you know not a better person but be a good person and um because we we just we're we're in this dark world isn't that what ellen g white says she, she didn't, didn't, want didn't want to come, come back. back and this was back in the 1800s <laughs> yes can you imagine that would look like paradise to us wow. today <laughs> we're out of folk we're, we're out of folks time we're out, <laughs> we're, we're out of time folks oh man we could talk about this for another hour but uh listen our time's up thanks for listening guys uh give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe uh check us out on our other platforms share these videos all right bless see you on the next one